yellow sand, the turquoise water, the, the lines of white water, the feeling of the beach was always there. I didn't realise how much I appreciated where I'd come from until I lived a year in Vancouver where they have wet summers. Uh, things got better living a year in Auckland, uh, catching little waves on an ironing board in uh, Takapuna. But heaven was going back to Manly and living in Manly in Victoria Parade and being able to walk one block to the beach. My first surfing experience was with my uncle Ray Hookham at North Bondi on a Gordon Woods 14 footer. I was six years of age. Uh, he caught a beautiful little wave with me on the front of the board. Uh, it was so exciting it scared me to death and I stood on the beach and watched him wave after wave after wave and that started it. My uncle Ray Hookham, Bluey Mays, uh, they rode solids at Bondi. The, the people I met at Manly, uh, by the time I was 11 or 12, were riding hollows. Uh, and there was competition between north side, south side. There were characters in both areas. Uh, uh, I, I never knew, you know, what was first or what was best, but I knew of the individuals, you know, from both areas. My uncle was very accomplished in the water, from what I gather. He was a North Bondi clubby. Uh, he was a sort of a charismatic beach person with his uh, two sisters. Uh, I, ha I have lovely photographs of them when they're in their 20s and they, they were part of that that Sydney beach culture. Like if you ever see the 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 glass paintings on on the side of hotels, the old glass paintings, uh, the surfers on wooden boards or body surfing, they're from that period and uh, it, it's, a, it's a slightly romantic period in Sydney uh, surfing history. Bluey Mays was uh, uh, an extroverted uh, character who, uh, who wanted to be prominent in, in in surfing and was and uh, uh, and you know pushed himself to be to be up the front of the sport. Um, I remember coming fourth in in a a contest at South Avalon. I think Bluey won it, and uh, Bluey was the most outspoken of the Southsiders, which included Scotty Dillon. Uh, Barry McGuigan, or Magoo, as, as you would know him. Um, and, and they were all part of the South Bondi Board Riders, a, a group that had broken away from regular surf club life. Um, the North Side had its characters too, uh, but the, the South Bondi Board Riders were the most flamboyant, the most extroverted, uh, they all had names painted on their boards. They were all, they, they were like characters from uh, uh, a, a Malibu scene. Uh, you know, while the American Malibu had its characters, Moondoggy, etc., etc., South Bondi had its characters. Uh, so they were pretty special. So the first time Solo would have been on a a board that I recovered from the beach at Manly after it was washed out of the, the surf club chambers and uh, did not appear to be wanted or loved. It was 19 feet long. Uh, it was a very old design, I believe. Somebody, possibly by the name of Oldfield, may have de designed and made it in the 40s. And 
I learned to surf on that 19 feet long, probably 24 inches wide, maybe 9 inches thick. Uh, perfect floating platform. And uh, I resurrected it, uh, made it beautiful with paint and, and fittings, and that was my surfboard for a year or two at, at, at age 10 or 11. It was sufficiently big that it resisted being carried and part of the adventure then, and we're talking 1955, was to maybe go to Queenscliff or North Stain uh, to surf and, you know, border that size with a, a scrawny little weed uh, like I was had to have wheels. 